question I have before we move on is like, uh, since you have so much experience with children, what age do you think is a good age for a child to get a cell phone? The cell phone is still locked down still by the parent. But what age do you think like, you know, it's kind of uh, I, I, and I know it differs per child. But what do you think? Like, what's the average age you feel like, you know, this child could be a little responsible with the cell phone if it's locked down and they don't have access to certain things? I think 12, 13, they need to be up there, I think, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't know the, I don't know the age. I think, like, when they start taking public transportation, when they start, like, you know, moving around the city by themselves, um, I don't know what age that, 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 that might vary, you know, from one household to another. But, um, yeah. Again, like, I, like you, you mentioned, y'all mentioned earlier, like, the screen time, like, reducing the screen time. Um, it's too much. Like even for me as an adult, like sometimes I get I'm on Instagram, <clears> I get caught in the scroll, you know. But I'm 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 glad that I still have the presence of mind to realize it. But it's be I think it's because I'm not a digital native, so I worry about children that are digital natives, and that's all they've known. Like since they were babies, they had screens. So I don't know that they know that it's a problem when they're like eyes are glued to a screen, and then they feel like they can't put it down. I don't know that they. They, they recognize like, wait, something ain't right. Like, I feel it. Like, I'm like, yo, like, I need to get off. I need to get off Facebook real quick. Or I need to get off Instagram, you know, but then I keep saying stuff that <laughs> that that interests me. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, Zuckerberg is controlling my life right now. I got to put this down. Right? Yeah. But I, but I worry that, like, people don't have that, you know, that filter. The kids don't. But if, they, if they're traveling young, I understand, but you still need to lock off certain things. You have to control and I think that's the thing. We need to start powering down their cell devices because they, they are they have access to too much. And then our kids go down the rabbit hole and that rabbit hole can get scary and we don't want them down that hole. So it's like, you got to shut some of this stuff off. We have the power and we need to use that power that we have. Um, so I just feel like the older they get, they're a little more mature. I don't see why a five or six or seven year old needs a cell phone. I really don't. Yeah, that, that that's... So I'm I'm with Shu about you know roughly twelve thirteen, but I also agree with the kid if they're you know if they in the inner city and they got to move around then that's different. But it's still ways to manage it. You go get a kid an iPhone and you can manage every app that yeah. they go into. Me, I probably I still my baby boy is a freshman in high school and I still randomly every now and then be like, hey, let me see your phone. Um, now my oldest son, his phone is just a little mini TV. Like he don't talk on it like that. Uh, but my baby boy, man, let me see your phone. What's going on up in this thing, man? And his, his mother still manages his apps. Like sometimes I got to call his mom like, Hey man, look, he got a, he need a bank app. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like the boy trying to use his, his uh, bank card from his phone. So I need you to, uh, approve that. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, they gotta understand. I, I like that term you use too, a kill a digital native. Like that's we come from the generation where we didn't have those things. And so kids yeah. like, Mr. Harris, when did you get your first phone? I was like, Man, I was nineteen in college. And it was a green screen. Like what you talking about? Now I, was, I, I had a phone. I had, I had the Motorola. I had a pager. I had a phone. I had a pager Miss in high school. I had it all, but I was still focused. I was top tier. We ain't play. Education matters. But but, <laughs> like, but that's a but 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 to some extent that that that's like a you're special. Let's put it that way. You're special. You're yeah. a different tier. <laughs> yeah. Generally speaking, generally speaking, when we think about it, though, I have a question and along that lines, right? Do we think the concept of um, rewarding bad behavior, whether it be with these technological devices or anything along that lines, with rewarding bad behavior is contributing to the lack of um the lack of of what would I call it the lack of knowledge seeking from children or the lack of a attention because they think that they would get whatever they want regardless of of maintaining a standard at school and at home. Hundred percent, hundred hundred twenty percent. It's because bad. some of my worst behaving and academic kids be the freshest. I have one young man, because I call them all my little knucklehead nephews and nieces, right? And um, 
But one young man, we have a much better relationship now, but it started out terrible. And I'm like, yo, he's skipping all the time. He don't do not no work up in here. He come in here and his objective is to, I remember one of the, one of the security officers brought him to class late. And uh, he said, man, Harris, I caught him skipping, man. And so uh, the kid was like, man, my goal is just to piss you off. Like, I said, really? He said, yeah, I, I, I want to do that for all my teachers. I'm just here to piss them off. Mm-mm. But I'm talking, I'm talking about one day I was, I, I was feeling real wild one day. I said, I said, hey, man, like, what size of J's you got on your feet, man? <laughs> and he was like, he was like, I, I don't know if it was my size or it was like right there at my side. I was like, you know what? If it wasn't a shame, man, I see you out there going to the bus. And I had to make you come about some things, man. You don't deserve them, but I, but I think it does contribute. Like it's, it's like, what am I working for? But then that stuff overflows into their life as they graduate, if they graduate. But as they go out into the real world, now there's this sense of entitlement, and they don't truly realize that they gotta work for things. I want this nice whip. I gotta work for it. I want this nice place to live. I got to work for it. I want this, this, to date this person. I got to work for it. I want to get some bread. I got to work for it. So it's got to be an exchange. <laughs> and, and sorry, Mr. Harris, to, to, to interject, but you just spoke about something that's like, if I, uh, this entitlement, and this, in, this entitlement distorts their reality. Mm-hmm. But the, the, they're groomed or they're taught entitlement not only at home but at school. Yep, that's the problem. Mm-hmm. You're actually teaching the child to feel they're deserving of things that they never work for. Yep. And when they leave that environment, especially those who taught high school, I know you had this conversation. They come back, say, "Mrs. Watson, man, I know what you. Uh, it's crazy out here, yo. Well, man, because that world smacks them in the face. Yep. They're not in school." They can't keep a job or the job that they have is making nothing mm-hmm. and it kicks in. Yep. It's and that's that's one of my biggest concerns with the school parents also. But like you're teaching this child to fail. You you are you are teaching this child to fail at life by teaching this child to be entitled. Yeah. It's scary. I it's funny because we always talk about the clothes and stuff. I actually asked my students, I say, yo, because they walking in with the drops. I got the new J's, they got the new J's, but I work. I'm wondering how you keep getting the new ones. For <laughs> <laughs> real. Like, yo. I said to one of my students, I said, let me ask you something. You ask your parents for all these sneakers, or they just give them to you. One kid said, nah, my dad a sneakerhead. He bought me every sneaker. He just well, he said, I didn't even want these. I said, okay. Okay, interesting. So the parents, I don't know, some of these parents feel bad that they never had these things growing up, or they want these kids to have everything because they just can't say no. Bruh, some of the kids don't even know what they get, and the parents just hand it to them. So yeah, this entitlement is being taught. And then they come to school, no accountability. So just, it's a, a revolving circle, you know, revolving door. It's just keep going back and forth with these kids. Same thing, same behaviors. So it's definitely being taught for sure.